five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. It is October 31st at 4.15 p.m. This is the Budget and Finance Committee meeting. We have Council Members Allen, Benedict, Evans, Gamble, Johnston, Mendez, Pulley, Sledge, Sorara, Syracuse, and Toombs in attendance. Uh, we have a quorum, and we will get started with the consent agenda. Uh, on your consent agenda, and it, please let me know if we need to pull something off. Our resolutions 1833, 1834, 1835, 1837, 1838, 1839, 1840, 1841, 1842, 1843, 1844, 1845, and 1846, and bills on consent our BL 2022 1506, 1507, and 1511. Does anything need to be pulled off? Council Member Mendy. Um, resolution 1845. Okay. Anything else? All right, I will get started with the captions, starting with RS 2022 1833. Roden and Welch approves a grant in the amount of $20,800 from the Barnes Fund for Affordable Housing to New Level Community Development Corporation for the expense, express purpose of constructing and rehabilitating affordable or workforce housing. RS 2022-1834, Roden Styles approves Amendment 1 and 2 to a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor to the Metro Action Commission to establish programs and services in an in integrated workforce system as the career services provider through the American Job Center. RS 2022 1835 Roden Hauser authorizes the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad vol valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 8101 McCrory Lane known as HV Land Company. RS 2022 1836 Lee Hauser Roden authorizes the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 4207 Murfreesboro Pike, known as Flats at Hickory Woods. RS 2022-1837 authorizes the Metro Department of Law to settle the claim of Renee Scott Pitt Patterson individually and as next of kin and administrix ad litem of the estate of Ricky Scott. Scott the third deceased and on behalf of the wrongful death beneficiaries of Ricky Scott against the metropolitan government in the amount of $175,000 and that said amount to be paid from self-insured liability fund. RS 2022-1838 authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Andrika, Andrikia Wiseman against the metropolitan government in the amount of $25,000 was said amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. RS 2022, 1839 approves the intergovernmental agreement between the United States Marshal Service and the Metro Nashville Police Department to investigate and apprehend local, state, and federal fugitives. RS 2022, 1840. Roden and Syracuse approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metro Nashville Police Department to provide bicycle and pedestrian education and enforcement to gain compliance with state and local ordinances. RS 2022-1841, Roden, Welch, and Stiles approves a Studio NPL Outreach Coordinator grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Metro Nashville Public Library to encompass outreach in the community, working with partners for the various Studio NPL programs, including STEM and mobile maker. RS 2022, 1842, Roden, Syracuse, and Welch approves an amendment two to a grant contract between the Metro Board of Health and STARS Nashville to fund an epidemiologist position to study data regarding cigarette smoking, vaping, and e-cigarette use with the primary focus on children and young adults. RS 2022, 1843, Roden, Pulley, and Welch approves an application for a transportation alternatives program grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to the Metro Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure to ensure safety and active transportation by providing walking facilities that feel safe, comfortable, inviting, and useful. 
RS-2022-1844 Virtual Styles Rodin and Pulley approves an application for a railroad crossing elimination grant from the United States Department of Transportation to the Metro Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure to conduct a planning project study to evaluate alternatives to improve the local rail and highway infrastructure to enhance rail safety. RS-2022-1845 authorizes the issuance and sale of water and sewer revenue bond application notes. Oh, this is the one we're taking off. Sorry, we're taking this one off of consent. Uh, our last resolution on consent is RS-2022-1846, Roden Pulley and Welch approves a grant application for the recycling rebate grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metro Water and Sewage Services to fund the purchase of curbside recycling carts. And uh, now on to bills on second reading that are on consent. BL 2022-1506, Hurt, Roden, and others amends Chapter 5, 1.6 of the Metro Code to impose a privilege tax upon the sale of goods and services at the National Museum of African American Music to be used for the cost of the museum. BL 2022-1507, Hurt, Roden, and others approves the, and authorizes the execution of the First Amendment to the sublease agreement between Oliver McMillan, Spectrum, Emory, LLC, and the Metropolitan Government for the benefit of the National Museum of African American Music. And BL 2022-1511, Sledge, Roden, and others approves a lease agreement between the Metro Board of Education and Conexion Americas. May I have a motion to approve the consent? Moved and properly second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Now we will go to the uh, first item on the agenda, RS-2022-1578 by Councilmember Sledge, Allen, Withers, and Young approves a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewage Services and 1302 Pillow Street, LLC to provide public water service improvements for Pillow Street's proposed development, as well as other existing properties in the area. Motion to, I have a motion. Moved and properly second, council member Sledge. Let me get your, there you go. Thank you, Vice Chair. So this gets deferred uh, automatically tomorrow per rule 43, so I just move for one meeting deferral. Thank you. All right, moved and properly seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. And this, uh, moving on to number two on your agenda, RS 2022 1827, approves the terms and conditions sheet of the agreements and transactions required to finance, construct, and operate a new enclosed multi purpose stadium on the East Bank, subject to the subsequent approval of final agreements and authorizing Metro government to pursue other matters, matters related thereto. Thank you. And we have a couple of amendments on this bill. Councilmember Mendez. Um, so I'm probably not gonna move the amendment. I put the amendment in the package so people um, could see it um, because I'll, I'll move it eventually when we actually take this up. Um, the, the amendment that I've got in the package would um, clarify um, the non-binding nature of this and that um, no, neither the, uh, the team in particular um, can't rely on it to, to know that they're gonna be reimbursed for anything or spend any money. They do that completely at their own risk. It really just cuts and paste the language from the term sheet into the resolution for that. Um, I would like to um, move for a two meeting deferral and, and, and have an explanation with that. Okay, uh, so you're not moving your amendment but you do want to move for a two meeting deferral on the bill. We do have another amendment offered by council member Hurt. So let's get that one on before we. Well, I, I think I've got a motion to defer. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, do we have to... Okay, that's fine. Um, we, I, we can find out in discussion whether councilman Hurt wants it added now or when we consider it um, later, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so we have a motion for a two meeting deferral. Right. Any discussion on the deferral? 
Yeah. Well, we need a second on that two meeting. Okay, thank you. Any and then, discussion on the deferral? Can I offer explanation? Yes. All right. Um, so, first of all, um, some background things. Um, the East Bank Stadium Committee, I think you all know, has been meeting, and there's a schedule on your desk. Um, we've got 11 meetings set up between now and December 14. Um, many, the last five, uh, or five of the last six meetings are uh, public comment sessions all around the county. Please take a look at that schedule and advertise that to your constituents through all your channels. Um, also, the East Bank Stadium Committee is going to be the central gathering place for questions. Um, related to the stadium and the term sheet. Um, we're working out um, with the administration a schedule where um, questions from council members are gonna be submitted to the administration once a week on Thursdays. Um, they're going to do their best to respond once a week also. Um, if there's a week where there's a few questions, maybe it's gonna be faster. If there's a week with a ton of questions, maybe it's gonna be a little bit slower. But all the questions um, from council members need to go to uh, Daniel Godin in the office um, and, and they'll be collected for the administration. Um, also, I wanna mention that the um, East Bank Stadium Committee website has got pretty much everything uh, most everything you could want to know about the stadium. I, I got somebody in Metro government asked me earlier today whether I had a copy of the lease for the existing stadium and all the lease documents are online at the website um, page already. So please check that out. Um, and then last, I put on everybody's desk um, uh, a one pager, which is a, a summary chart um, that I put together and I, I try not to play um, lawyer in the council chamber, but that reflects, I don't know, like what would be $5,000 worth of legal work? It's like six bucks worth of council time, but as, if it were legal work, it would be worth a lot more. Um, and it, it is attempting to show the different buckets of money laid out in the term sheet, which ones are known, which ones aren't, what's tax money, what's available only for a stadium, and then for each line item, um, whether it's metro sales tax, state sales tax, metro other tax, state other tax, money implicated in just a chart where you can see with check boxes what's implicated. And, and that's just for y'all's consideration. Um, I think, um, uh, if we defer this for two meetings, the East Bank Stadium Committee will still have um, three meetings left after that, include, including two public comment meetings, but we are, um, we're cramming the committee full of as much information as quickly as we can. It was originally gonna be almost three months of meetings. We've got to condense down to 45 days um, and uh, we're going as fast as we can um, to answer everybody's questions in, in both the public and council. Um, so with that's everything that goes into um, the uh, motion to defer. If council member Hurt, uh, wants to add her amendment on this meeting, um, I'll, I, I can withdraw the motion to defer. I suspect that like me, she maybe put it in the package just so it's there for discussion um, before we get to it. Um, but that's what I have, Chair, thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion uh, for two meeting deferral and a second. Okay, oh, thank you. Other, other discussion? Council Member Benedict. Th thank you, Vice Chair. Um, so uh, while I appreciate uh, the request for a two meeting deferral, I'm actually going to speak out against a deferral. Um, I shared, I've had a lot of communication with the community in the past few days, and I'm of the opinion that we need to go back and uh, respect the will of this body first. As I understand it, the um, analysis that the council unanimously passed as a budget amendment um, earlier this year called, that called again for a full independent analysis of what it would cost to renovate the existing football stadium. I believe that was delivered and will be delivered to our inboxes this afternoon. Um, I just found that out about five minutes ago. Um, but instead of, um, you know, we asked for that study earlier this year and the, yet the administration right now is pressuring us to make a decision. And I just, in looking at, um, everything that's been going on with that committee, I just think it's important for us to talk about what this means with the public. And 
you know, I'll preface my, I've, I've got quite a few comments if you'll entertain me, Vice Chair. Um, you know, we all want to keep our Titans and we want this, of course, to be a favorable deal for everybody, especially our hardworking middle-class taxpayers here in, in the town um, and throughout the state. Um, the state has been generous and they've offered a contri uh, to contribute a significant amount of money. And uh, it's very important for us to consider that contribution as we weigh all of our options. And I can't emphasize this enough. Those state dollars are very valuable and we need to take advantage of them as much as possible. Um, with the state, as we know, we often end up on other sides of the issues, but I think we're all aligned that we see value in having an NFL team in Nashville. And that's not good just only for our city, that's also good for all of Tennessee and for Tennesseans. Now, I've heard loudly from not only my constituents, but across the city that this deal, the term sheet that's in front of us is more costly than taxpayers should bear. There's too many unknowns and the price tag is too hefty. Um, as I said, we want our Titans to stay in Nashville, but the council has asked for information that we still don't have. Um, we expect to have it again this afternoon, but once we have it, we can analyze that and inspect it to help paint a full picture of the taxpayer's burden, burden in the current contract. There's terms in that contract that were in the prior analysis that was given to us that was not an independent analysis that we ordered, um, that was a third party analysis that, um, I'm not sure that the first class stadium um, um, definition was was followed to a T, and I hope that in the analysis that we're gonna get, it will be, and so we'll have the opportunity to review that now. I just wanna be clear, we do not need to rush a decision about a stadium. There's no negative consequence for us waiting a few more weeks until we have the information our constituents, constituents overwhelmingly asked us to have. And, and further, even if we wait a few more weeks, we can still strike a deal. We have time, even though this mayor's positioning this deal as if it's inevitable and must be done now, it's possible that the deal we're looking at is the best deal, but we haven't been able to vet that yet. We just don't know. However, we can find that out in short order just over the next few weeks. We don't have a full picture of the cost that we're obligated to pay in our current contract. We've been given one option also, an enclosed stadium. However, a new stadium could be built without a roof. The state's incentives for an enclosed stadium are more than helpful. Council Member Benedict, yes. I'm, I'm not sure. So what is your... Uh, I'm, I'm speaking out against the deferral. So I would like to... to um, I moved approval on the bill so that we could have an up or a down vote and not do the deferral. Okay, thank you. Council Member Sarar. I do have questions for the administration. Oh. If, when it, if you'll allow me. Can we can, can I come back to you? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I will be speaking in support of the deferral. I uh, started looking at the term sheet, and even as an accountant, I have a lot of questions. Uh, and I think that what the deferral allows us to do is to be able to ask those questions that we have, as well as the questions that our constituents has. And so, for me, I think rushing to take a vote up or down is is. Uh, too soon. Uh, I think giving ourselves the time to analyze everything, get answers to the questions. The report that we're getting this afternoon, are we supposed to get it in time to look at it to be able to make an informed decision? So for me, I think I need those extra time uh, to be able to make sure that whatever vote I'm going to take uh, is informed and is based on facts. And with that, I re, uh, support uh, the deferral for two meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Johnston. Uh, one second. There we go. Thank you, Chair. I'll also speak in favor of the deferral. I think um, a, a, a no vote right now sends the wrong message. I think a deferral shows that we're still looking at it. We are still asking questions. We are hopefully gonna have the ability to amend the term sheet, um, but certainly receive more clarification and information on um, specific costs that are related to the stadium, but not specifically the stadium. I think those are gonna be um, quite large. So um, I, I don't wanna say no, I don't wanna say yes. And so I think the more appropriate motion is a deferral. Thank you. Any more discussion? Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was actually going to say the same thing. I do think that a deferral is in order for there to be more discussion and many questions answered. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Benedict. 
Thank you, Vice Chair, and sorry for reading all of those prepared remarks. I do have some questions in regards to, uh, for the administration. The reason why I would, I'm seeking up or down vote is so that we'll have time to look at that analysis and get a better term sheet in front of this body is what my goal was there with an up or down vote. Um, for the administration, and, and I guess we're talking about a deferral now, so I'm, I don't have, uh, these questions will have to wait. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any more discussion on the deferral? Okay, with that, we are ready for a vote. All those in favor of a two-meeting deferral? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. We'll defer for two meetings. Next is RS 2022-1828, uh, request the division of purchases with the assistance of the Department of Planning to issue a solicitation for development of portions of the Nissan Stadium campus. May I have a motion? Thank you, moved and properly seconded. Council Member Mendez for discussion. Thanks. Um, this is uh, the, the second of the three pieces of legislation before us um, related to the stadium. This one um, is the administration asking for uh, approval to issue an RFP to get a development partner. Um, and of the three, um, this is the only one that uh, I think I could consider moving um, relatively quickly. Um, the administration, I think, is seeking to have this be deferred for um, one meeting, and then they'd like us to pass it at the next meeting. Um, I've had some discussion with uh, Mr. Jamison today about um, proposing an amendment for the next meeting that would uh, clarify in no uncertain terms that if we were to pass this um, uh, at our next meeting, that it wouldn't be um, construed as any sort of commitment to do anything related to term sheet at all, one way or the other. And it wouldn't, we'd never hear from anybody that, oh, you gotta approve the term sheet because you issued that RFQ, um, that we wouldn't hear that. And uh, um, uh, I've offered to take a first crack at that, which I, I will. So I think the idea um, that makes sense here, uh, and, and I think that is important because there absolutely are things um, that will have to be in the final documents that are complete unknowns right now um, in the term sheet that will require a development partner. I think uh, um, certain people on, on both sides of the deal, the mayor's office and the team might have an idea, for example, where parking should be, but really um, none of them are actual uh, real estate professionals. They don't know where parking should be. They don't know how the spot should be aligned. A development partner is needed for that. Um, and I think that maybe is the case, whether it's a renovation or or a new stadium. So I think it does make sense um, to try to let this go forward as long as um, it doesn't uh, bind us to um, commit on anything. And, and so if we defer it one more meeting, we get a chance to think about that for another couple weeks and see whether there's an amendment that makes us feel like we're um, not committing to anything regarding the term sheet by letting that one go forward. So with that, I would ask for a one meeting deferral. All right. This all right, moved and properly seconded. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I appreciate the request for the one meeting deferral. Uh, that seems appropriate. One, one question I'm trying to get my arms around is, I know this needs to be fairly general because we're, I mean, we, we don't know what the specifics are, that's the that's the, the job of the development partner. Um, but there were specific goals that were um, put forth by the Affordable Housing Task Group. And if we are gonna defer this, um, I would love a better understanding of um, at what point is it appropriate to, to connect with, with those goals that were set and should that become part of this RFQ or does it happen at the RFP phase? Or whatever. So I don't know if that question can be answered now, or if that's one I need to put on the Thursday Danielle request. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. We'll we'll have that for the Thursday request. Any other council member hurt? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the uh, proposed amendment that I have for this one is the same as I had for the other one, and I'm okay with. Uh, 
keeping it until later, but I'm basically just trying to codify basically what the Titans has said that they've wanted, and that is community engagement. I really appreciate the one community plan that they have and have outlined. The uh, administration also says that they want to be community driven and engaged, and I want to make sure that this is a plan that uh, speaks to all of Nashville. As long as I've been on this council, I've always spoken and advocated for the support and inclusion of minority and women-owned businesses. And basically, the amendment just does that, is to codify it, make it a part of the RFP, RFQ, contract, or whatever. We just want to make sure that it is written in stone that there will be a commitment for that inclusion. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation of the amendment. We will, uh, we have a motion and a second to defer one meeting on this uh, bill with the amendment deferred as well. Any other discussion on the deferral? All right. With that, all those in favor of a one meeting deferral say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? All right, thank you. And moving on to RS 2022-1829 approves the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for firefighting apparatus and fire service vehicles for the Department of General Services. May I have a motion? Thank you. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Moving on to RS 2022-1830, Gamble, Johnston, Roden, and others appropriate $7,890,153 in American Rescue Plan Act funds to the Urban League of Middle Tennessee and Nashville State Community College to advance workforce equity and strengthen family foundations through education and training in Davidson County. May I have a motion? Thank you. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Serrara. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to find out if this is connected to the work that Council Member Druffle started doing in terms of engaging youth and education and getting people in work first. I just want to see if there's a correlation, if there is or not. It is different, uh, but we do have with us uh, Mr. Clifton Harris with the Urban League and, and Dr. Shanna Jackson with Nashville State. If you all want to come up to the podium and just give a brief uh, description of some of the partners uh, that you will be working with in this program, that will be great. Uh, public table. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for that question. This is a collaborative. Nashville State is a part of the initiative you're talking about, and so we will reach out and partner with those that are already doing existing work. This is about going into the communities and delivering workforce training. So it will be that bridge from pre-K all the way through, but this gives us a chance to work directly with the adults first. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in addition, we will partner with all of the agencies that touch workforce in some manner, um, as well as all of the Promise Zone organizations um, in the Promise Zone um, area and um, with the local um, Meharry um, Hospital, as well as Metro General uh, and others. You know, so this will be a collective that we will build and we will be inviting agencies you know, to the table. Thank you. Um, in looking at the, the proposal, thank you, it's much needed and we need workforce development, so I'm 100% uh, in favor. My question is, in looking at the details, I saw some health care work. Is there any uh, move towards, uh, somebody talk about we need affordable housing, do we have uh, development into works that would actually help in providing housing union kind of work? Is that part of the thing or is this just health care focus? Oh, the, career, the curriculum. The careers will be very diverse. Okay. Speaking about Tom Druffles, 
it's going to be those different sectors that we know are high demand, high wage. So we will develop training. Some already exist. Some people are already doing training. We're not going to recreate things that are already happening. We're just going to partner with people. I think the unique thing about this proposal, at least the Nashville State piece, is we're proposing to do this ready to reconnect to make sure we do the good work up front for people who say they want to be health care, but they'd actually be great networking to get that done first and get the resources they need to not just start but finish their training. And so that's what we're doing. We're going into the community really assessing reading, writing, math, skills, all of those things that you want to know before you just say, here's training, go do it. And so by partnering, we can then facilitate, and I know the Urban League will help with that, training that's already existing. But whatever we need to develop, we're gonna work with employers to make sure that that is a quality and that it actually will help them have employment. So we're trying to get everybody on economic mobility based on what their real strengths are and then support them, wrap around that support to help them get there. Thank you. I want to, to applaud you, and this is great. Uh, when we talk about even housing and things like that, you know, there's a component to it that has to do with being able to afford it and having the money and having the job. I think this addressed that part of it, and it's very much needed, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to add something, Clifton? No, okay. Thank you both. Thank you so much for this very comprehensive program. I'll just speak briefly from the ARP committee's perspective. Uh, this is something that came to us twice and what really uh, drew the committee into supportive of this project is that they aren't necessarily inventing something new, but they're expanding the work that's already out there and they're going into communities. They'll be partnering with MDHA uh, to reach out to their residents, over 30,000 residents, and helping them get into this program and get into good, good jo paying jobs and careers. So thank you. Any other questions? Council Member Hurd. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any questions, but I also want to applaud this effort. What I'm very, very pleased is, is that Nashville State already has uh, a presence in West Nashville, South Nashville, basically all over this region. And they have people that are already coming with the Tennessee promise that's already been made. And for them to give them an opportunity and an option of doing some type of vocational work. And, and what, what we know is that these uh, young folk want to be in a position where they're able to make money. And this gives them that opportunity to connect them to the jobs, give them the training that they need, and also expand the education that they need to have in order to get those uh, jobs that are, are really uh, competitive. So I'm really, really happy and pleased to see this effort to move forward, knowing that it's already been a part of the four quadrants in the city. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, with that, we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Next is RS 2022-1831, Sepulveda, Johnston, and others, approves $272 million and four, no, $272,000 dollars and 42, $272,000 dollars and 42 dollars. Why can't I get that right? In the American Rescue Plan Act funds to complete anticipated funding for critical immigration legal services. May I have a motion? Okay. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Sepulveda, do you want to speak to this? Uh, let me get your, there you go. Thank you, um, Vice Chair. Um, so if you all remember, we approved some funding for uh, Turk and JFON um, a couple of meetings ago. We did not complete their request because we did not have the second half of our ARP funds in the bank and so we said that we would go ahead approve part of the funding and once we had the second part of the ARP funding in the bank then we would finish um, appropriating the funds for um, legal services so that is what this legislation is. Thank you. Any discussion or comments? All right with that all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, moving on to RS 2022-1832, Gamble Johnston and others approves, uh, 
$399,149 in American Rescue Plan Act funds to complete anticipated funding for Right to Eviction Council. May I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Serrara. Thank you, Chair. Uh, same thing as with what happened with the bill that Council Member Supervisor was talking about. This was the same thing. 87% was funded. This is the 13% to finish it. But I wanted to uh, share for the uh, sake of the uh, viewing public, because this is something that a lot of people have been anticipating. Uh, legal aid has been going around and doing a lot of outreach, letting people know what's happened. Um, they got the contract finalized end of September, but now they've got all the attorney hired. As a matter of fact, they're doing a in training today, making sure that the attorneys are ready to go. Uh, they've conducted about uh, legal services for about 32 unduplicated individuals with varying demographics. The work is already started, the attorney is ready. Uh, this money will be used for the outreach with partners into the community to make sure that we reach as many uh, uh, varied communities as possible and the community is ready and the people should to know about it. Uh, everybody, please sp uh, spread the word. Uh, we want to make sure that it is used and that we help as many people as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? With that, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we will move down the agenda to RS uh, number 20 on your agenda, RS 2022-1845 authorizes the issuance and sale of water and sewer revenue bond anticipation notes and a principal amount not to exceed 217,000, seven, at any one time in the form of commercial paper of metropolitan government and providing for one or more dealer argument, agreements issuing and paying agency agreements and credit or liquidity facility agreements and providing for certain other materials related thereto. May I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. Any questions or comments, Council Member Mendez? Just since it's a big number, 217 million, may we have an explanation about what this is and how this fits into Metro's financing arrangements? Okay, here we go. Is that, no, oh, sorry, okay. wrong table. <laughs> <laughs> I can start, but for more substantive questions, uh, Michelle Bosch, Metro Treasurer, is here as well. This is just um, the existing water sewer program, same way we use GOCP, it's the interim funding before we do bond takeout. Um, the liquidity provider expires at the end of January. This is just a replacement of the existing provider. Thank you. Any other? Council Member Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I know we used to get really, really, really low interest rates on these, lower than what we would get for the bond, and that was part of the beauty with interest rates going crazy. Can anyone address what, what those have gone to on the commercial paper? So these are um, variable rates, so they reset uh, every time we do a draw. Um, you are correct, short-term rates have gotten higher and continue to grow higher, um, but still in the long run when compared to a long-term borrowing, it's still attractive to take this approach. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? With that, we're ready to take a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. And we have, oh. Which one? Oh. Oh, yes, I skipped one. Going back to number 11, uh, RS 2022, 1836, Lee Hauser and Roden authorizes the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to multifamily housing project at 4207 Murfreesboro Pike, known as Flats at Hickory Woods. May I have a motion? Thank you, moved and properly seconded. Uh, this uh, bill has an amendment uh, proposed by Council Member Lee. And we can get an explanation from the amendment. I'm happy to sign on, do I need to sign on? Uh, let me. Uh, the, amend the amendment changes the, uh, the, the 
the first year pilot number two, from 95,756 to 94,094 dollars. Okay, Council Member Allen. Question on the amendment. There was a reference to mm. making it sound like we had hit the $2.5 million cap and that's why this was being adjusted, but the analysis shows that we've still got 700,000 plus below that cap. So why, why are we doing this? I believe the reduction is because the incorrect tax rate was applied. Okay, so it doesn't really have anything to do with that cap. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Any further questions? All right, with that, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. And we are going now to you number... Need to, you need to move, you, you move the amendment, but you need to move the bill. I move moved. the amendment, I'm going too fast, let me slow down. Move the amendment, now we will uh, move the bill as amended. Thank you. Moved and properly seconded, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. And we are going to bills on second reading. Number 22 on your agenda, Bill 2022-1450 by Allen and Van Rees. It amends Chapter 2.222 of the Metro Code relative to expense reimbursement and legal representation and ethics matters before the Board of Ethical Conduct. May I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. Uh, there are two proposed amendments. Uh, Council Member Allen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move uh, my first amendment with a brief explanation. Um, this amendment is a little different from what we'd seen before based on the good conversation that we had before. Um, it would still add the recitals to explain what the goal of this is, which is simply to provide some protection for um, volunteer appointed board members, not for elected officials makes that more clear. Um, and then it also specifically removes references to providing any thing for elected officials. And this amendment differently um, gives the discretion of whether that would be um, provided to the um, ethics board as was suggested at the last meeting. And also um, reduce that amount from 15,000 to 5,000, which would reduce the fiscal impact, but I think still be something meaningful to the um, elected commission. Uh, members. And then I just would like to um, thank Director Darby for providing us with some data about how often this issue does come before the Ethics Board and there was some good information provided to, uh, to the council members. And I just wanna say some of the takeaways from that are that over the past 10 years, there are several of these filed every year, so people are making use of it. Um, and that the data shows that most of the complaints that were filed um, were determined to be unfounded or were dismissed for, for, uh, for re reasons determined by the ethics board. Several of them were confirmed and sanctions were imposed and those come through the council most of the time. And most tellingly, three in the past year have been filed by the same citizen and all three of those were unfounded. Um, so to me, that is um, consistent with what my goal has been, which is simply if uh, something were to go to the level of, of harassment or unfounded allegations that our, our board and commission members who are volunteers who give of their time to help run the government know that they've got some, um, some coverage and some support from the city. Um, and just to mention, I mean, I, I have faith in the ethics board. Uh, the members are elected by the two national bar associations, the chamber, the League of Women Voters, and some union organizations. Um, and so I feel, I appreciate the suggestion to move the discretion to them and, and hope that with that, we've um, solved some of the concerns that were discussed at the last. So I would ask for support uh, for this amendment and for the bill as amended. Thank you. Any further comments on the amendment? Council Member Mendez. I guess this question for legal counsel. Um, do we think that that Metro Board of Commission has the, so, so they would be appropriating money? No, they would not be appropriating money. They would be approving the expenditure of money. The appropriation would still need to be made. Um, I've been told by our finance director that if one of these circumstances comes up between now and the end of this fiscal year, that they would strive to find some funding for it. Um, 
in the upcoming fiscal year, it would need to be uh, in the budget. An amount would be need to set in the budget. So that would be one of those reserve amounts that we set, basically? run this by Tom Cross yet, but uh, <laughs> the expectation, if there were something this year, we would probably use uh, the judgment fund, and then we will use the data that um, Director Darby harvested, as well as the experience over the next six months, and kind of figure out what the appropriate appropriation amount should be uh, for the next fiscal year. I, would, I think a very de minimis number is everyone's expectation. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to uh, make a federal case out of this. I, I think this is um, this whole piece of legislation is got some good intent behind it. I think having a a way for only one side of a um, dispute to get reimbursed is uh, not fair. Will chill complaints further, um, and all the things I said last time. Um, uh, the thrust of them remain, uh, especially about the um, unfairness um, to and difficulty of pursuing complaints um, in a way that um, even if valid can be prevailed upon. Um, and so I think, like I, I don't think the amendment's a good idea. I don't think the ordinance is a good idea. I prefer if it's gonna pass that um, amendment two goes on it. Um, but at this point, we've uh, uh, had a running set of four conversations about it, four consecutive meetings. So I'll, I'll vote no on the amendment. Okay. In council member Sorara. Thank you, Chair. Um, when these claim or call, does anybody know if either side always have a cancel? Or what kind of expenses do they incur? So we, we I mean, I'm trying to find out where the 5,000, 15,000 come up. What is the rationale behind the amount to reimburse the winning side? Is it based on lost work time or is it based on cost of defending themselves? Oh, and sorry. what are those, if anybody knows what they are? Who do we? You want to take a stab? I, at the I will just. Out. I will okay. just respond from from my experience on this. I believe, in general, it stops before it gets to that point. Um, I, I have experience with one person who was a board member who was working in good faith um, and was accused of being unethical, and who took that very seriously and felt to preserve her integrity, she needed to hire legal counsel. Um, it did cost her around $5,000, and it was found to be unfounded. Um, so that's a, a sample of one, which is not good, um, which is not statistically um, something that we want to make things on. And that's that's why I lowered it from 15000 to 5000 um, also because I think that, that um, decreases the fiscal impact of it as well. But I, I believe that in, in my limited experience as, as Speaker Pro Tem, uh, the council members serve in the ex officio capacity on the ethics board. And the year that I served on that, um, what I saw were typically people who, um, unless they were lawyers themselves, did not hire lawyers and that part of it. So I think it's a somewhat unusual case anyway when a board member takes it so seriously that they feel like they need to hire legal counsel. I think in general, they have, they have felt comfortable. Um, Letting the the board, uh, the ethics board, work through its process, which is which is you know very uh, organized and based on very well spelled out criteria. Do we think that uh, having a pool to reimburse for legal expenses or expenses will now make everyone wants to get an attorney to defend themselves? Is that the other side of this possibly? Can I speak? Yes. Um, I mean, again. This is, this is somewhat uncharted territory. I, the other cities that have, have taken steps to protect their boards generally have, uh, instead of this, have put in place punitive um, conditions that, that fine the people who frivolously hired, filed, filed complaints. We are not doing that. We are not penalizing anyone for filing a complaint. We, we are simply that. saying, if you agree uh, to serve on a board, um, we hope that you will do that in good faith, that you can make complex decisions and complicated decisions 
expecting to, um, to not have retribution because someone didn't like what you decided. Um, if you are guilty of an ethical complaint, which for the most part deals with taking money that affects your decisions, then the ethics board, I think, does a pretty thorough job of determining that. Um, so this is, this again, this is not trying to increase the, the amount of people who come running for money. It's simply to provide a measure of assurance and protection to board members uh, in face of a increasingly litigious society and one where people don't hesitate to accuse people whether they have facts or not. Um, so that's, that's the goal. Thank you. Johnson. Thank you. Council member uh, Mendez and then Johnston. I, I tried my hardest. Um, I, I, honest to God, I, I fully respect Councilman Allen and the approach, but three quarters of what just got said from a legal point of view doesn't make any sense. Um, in other cities where something is found to be frivolous and there's a fine, there's a big difference between an affirmative finding that a claim is frivolous versus somebody simply not prevailing. And so we're setting up a situation where a citizen who probably doesn't have a lawyer simply fails to prevail. That means they could um, be 49% convincing but not carry their burden of proof. And then we're gonna go um, give uh, reimburse fees um, to a board member who does have a lawyer. That is a far, far, far cry from an affirmative finding that a claim is frivolous and had no basis in fact or law to begin with. And you just got done making the point, council member, that when they're frivolous, they regularly get dismissed. So they get dismissed right away by the board if they have no basis in fact or law, and people don't incur legal fees then. And, and conflating the failure to prevail with a frivolous claim isn't fair to the conversation, respectfully. And, and then furthermore, um, this is, as you just described, it's about one person. One person who is a very nice person, who went through something, did take the claim seriously, did spend legal fees, but we're changing the law off of one person. And respectfully, to come up with a brand new process that's not really needed um, for a universe of one um, is not what we should do. And, and setting it up so it does provide an incentive for board members um, to um, be able to get a lawyer and get reimbursed for it while no remedy whatsoever for a citizen who tries to move forward um, on their own to meet a legal burden of proof, um, I don't think is an appropriate way to go forward. And, and, and again, using the examples of other cities where there's an affirmative finding that something is frivolous, we already do that informally. The board already kicked frivolous claims to the curb uh, before they ever get to a hearing. Council Member Johnston. I was gonna say something along those same lines, but Councilman Mendez um, beat me to it, so I will just say what he said. <laughs> and then leave it at that. And I will be voting against the, I've said this before, I'll be voting, against, and I so appreciate the thought behind it and the intent behind it. Um, I, I really do, and I understand it to a certain extent. I just think there's gonna be some unintended consequences that um, we don't want. Um, and so for that reason, I'll be voting against everything um, related to this. Thank you. So we are currently on the amendment, uh, Council Member Allen amendment to 1450. Are there any more comments on the amendment before we take a vote? Okay, with that, all those in favor of Council Member Allen's amendment, say aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, I'm sorry, can you raise your hands again if you were aye? And then if you are a no. Okay, the motion fails. Now we will, so is there a need for Council Member Mendez's amendment? I, I'm just gonna skip the amendment and urge people to vote no on the, um, on the, I guess it's an ordinance, on the ordinance. Thank you, any more comments uh, before we, or do we have a motion? We, we can make a motion, I need a motion to move the bill it's not amended. Okay. Okay, great. So we can take a vote on the bill. 
as it stands unamended. unamended. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, I'm sorry. If we could do the hands again <laughs> on the bill uh, for it. And that those against? Thank you. Uh, the vote count is four, four, eight against. Four, seven. Four, 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 seven against. Okay, thank you. And we will move on to Bill 2021, 2011, I'm sorry, BL 2011, 1527. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a typo. Uh, so we're that on number 26 on your agenda. Uh, men's ordinance number BL 2022-1415 regarding the makeup of the tax incentive abatement study and formulating committee membership. May I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I'm just asking about, is this a question in terms of the makeup of the actual study and formulating committee membership? And um, if so, just want to know the reason for, are they trying to add or reduce the number um, with it? <laughs> Councilmember Allen, would you like to speak to your bill? Thank you. Yes, ma'am, and Director Darby can add to it if necessary. Um, this is not changing the number. Um, there, were, there were two things that it does. One is um, it had not specifically said that council members could be members of this, and there are some circumstances where council members specifically cannot be members of a committee. So we wanted to make clear that that, 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 that was intended to be an option. Um, up to two council members. And then the second was that the numbers didn't add up uh, because the bill had inadvertently passed through um, still allowing the mayor's office to appoint two positions and that didn't add up to the seven, that added up to eight. So there's a correcting that, that the mayor's office appoints one person. So those are the two goals of, of this ordinance. Okay. Any further questions? All right, with that, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right, I think that concludes our agenda. Meeting adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov. 